Welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave, another day of the never-ending war between bulls and bears. But you know what? As always, wish you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest. Just wishing you well over here from Helsinki, Finland. Another very cold, very dark day as I get a little bit of a later start myself. So I do apologize about that. Let's waste no more time but get into the live scene right over here. Daily, daily, uh, the way that I look at it, overall, just more of the same. Uh, we do have that very nice orderly drop-off in volume. So the bigger picture is corrective in nature, not only structure, but also volume signature. Uh, operating below all major moving averages, you do see that 10 simple moving average and the 21 exponential moving average starting to really get a little bit more of an aggressive slope to the downside. So I do interpret that as, you know, as as trend strengthening, essentially. Now, you will notice that basically the wick of this guy right over here, 34.25, is providing the impetus for resistance on our current structure right now. So the way that I read this is that once we have the breakdown off of this area right over here, 35.10, just, you know, not using really any other indicators except for these moving averages, um, you know, as long as we're living below that area, I look for this to kind of be the triggering factor in, in the way that I look for uh, any sort of changes in market structure. So for now, just more of the same overall daily stokes over here, still pointed down, still, you know, well deep into the bearish control zone. We got our DMI ADX starting to strengthen. Actually, that ADX is getting a little bit stronger, although DMI minus is weakening, funnily enough. So again, we are we going to get, you know, one of these one off signals like you got kind of over here where the signal gets faded pretty damn quickly. Um, although those did match up with some, you know, some relatively OK moves. Uh, overall, this this right here is not too not too convincing the way that the DMI minus is, you know, it's it's dominant, but it's not, you know, it's not like pointed up like an erect pinoir over here. Uh, we do, you know, th this is what you get. This is what you get when you have like a full on signature uh, on a real breakdown where it just shoots up and is very, 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 very powerful, very erect. And uh, that was a break of 6000 right over here. So again, looking at these areas, there are certainly things that uh, that, uh, that, that there are certainly non confluent factors actually with what's going on in the lower time frames as far as you know are we bouncing or are we not but the higher time frame is pretty damn pretty damn um pretty damn clear we have daily jewel over here actually completely faking out i mean it wasn't a fake out to the upside because that was actually a buy right over here but getting shuffled right back down pretty damn soon afterwards uh this is actually a sell signal um I I do not take sell signals in this in this area for the jewel. Yes, it is the best indicator I know. It is the most powerful indicator I know. Uh, we'll just have to monitor this one going forwards. But uh, yeah, that 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 technically is a sell signal. Although again, not not the most powerful of all time. Uh, daily RSI again, just you know, well deep into the bearish control zone. Not too much to update right around there. It's a two day, the three day, and the monthly that we need to be most concerned on right now. Is the monthly does you know come to a crawl uh, in uh, two days? Sorry, one day. What the 31st? There's 31 days in, in January, right? Or is there 30? I don't know. You'll have to let me know. Anyways, uh, right over here, two day stokes uh, still angled downwards. They are losing momentum, so fair enough. That's a counterpoint to saying that this is uh, that uh, that this is not just gonna you know shoot right on through. Um, which I do want to have the more conservative view that Bitcoin is not going to just you know flush straight down to the mid 2000s from this area. Can it happen? Yes. And I'm gonna present actually. a pretty compelling case for that to actually happen um but as far as trading goes as far as my overall perspective you know i'm i'd rather be safe than sorry so looking at two day adx dmi it is actually a little bit more erect than what we saw on the daily uh dmi mine is still not really getting super up there but hey it is a dominant trend and we do have adx strengthening but then again it's like do you get some that you had right over here we never even really got to like a full-on reset now did we but hey you know again just trying to just trying to find clues within the charts right now on these higher time frames which are you know they the, the higher time frames make, make no mistake about it they are all bearish the question is in my opinion do we try to consolidate a little bit higher do we try to consolidate this area right over here and, and put in a rally again you know maybe even take another stab at uh, in the 4000 region or is it or is it what we just talked about in a straight on flush down i do not want to present the case saying that this uh, i do not want to be mistaken when talking about these sorts of things as thinking that the overall bottom is in i do not believe that the bottom is in again go on to the uh if you're interested in in the full explanation go on to the playlist titled long-term analysis as that is significantly more much more in depth than what i'll do during this video but basically the reason why i do not believe that the bottom is in is because one i don't see volume that i want to see in bottom not two i don't see the reaction that i want to see on bottom three the time spent at the bottom does not look right as for a typical you know mark cycle bottoms go uh for the mvt signal not giving, giving us not necessarily a not not only not a buy signal but actually kind of a sell signal as well and on top of that on top of that uh, 
uh, volatility, which I actually put significant weight on, which I don't see too many people talking about, is nowhere near bottoming levels or you know or, or just major inflection levels. So, anyways, that's the five second explanation. I will go through in, in in detail in that video. So go check it out if you want that, or you can just trust me, <laughs> and and uh, and you don't have to go through an hour of uh, of examples. But anyways. Right, right over here, two-day dildo time frame. Um, looking at this guy right over here, you know, very, very lackluster volume. Overall, just consolidation all the way through. So we don't really have like a full-on breakdown as far as the whole structure goes. But obviously, in the lower time frames, we can go through. And this was a breakdown right over here. But I do want to point out that you know this this nice orderly drop off in volume, right? This nice orderly drop off in volume that 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 tells us that this market, that this market structure is corrective and and you know and cons this consolidation is likely to be resolved to the downside. We are kind of wearing out our welcome in this area actually when this gets full um you know you know using this as a trend line right over here which does not need to be exact just needs to be kind of like a guideline but if we you know once it gets down to like this small pitter pattern which which is what we're essentially getting i mean you had this move over here then this move over here then this move most recently right over here uh it is getting so fucking low now that the next move it suggests that that's going to be the big move so going back to that discussion, you know, is this going to be, you know, are we going to do another bounce up to like the low 4000s perhaps, or are we going to go straight down and, and flush this bitch out? Well, you know, we can put together the cases, but it's that's telling us that we are getting to that decision point. It's not necessarily telling us that it's definitely going one way or the other. Although, again, putting into context what this structure looks like, I mean, it's just lower highs and lower lows over the course of over a year. The trend is your friend until the end of the trend. And uh, this is a pretty fucking nasty downtrend, to be uh, quite frank. And, um, that would suggest that it's more likely to break down. I mean, in a bear market, you're more likely to break down than break up. Doesn't mean it's always going to happen, but uh, statistically speaking, if you make that assumption, you'll be right more often than you're wrong. And that's really all it needs to be. And if you can combine that with good risk management tools, well, you can be rich AF. Anyways, uh, over here on the three-day, not too much different. I mean, you know, the three-day uh, dildo death cross right over here, still very much active below all major moving averages. So you'll notice that these uh, that that these dildo death crosses get really, um, they actually get played out when you get into a position like this. So I'll bring you back on over here to the two-day. Remember, the two-day dildo death cross happened right over here um, in early September of 2018. And it took a while for this move to actually play out doesn't always mean it's going to take this long. In fact, the daily happened just just about uh, just about exactly. But this is why I use these moving averages because they actually tell you a lot about price action. You can see that once price action was just slowly but surely ground down below all major moving averages, you know, just getting each and every one above it, it just slowly but surely right over here, then the actual move happened. Well, are we kind of seeing the same thing on the three-day little time frame right over here? I mean, kind of are, uh, kind of are. So again, offering up that, that same counterpoint to my, to my more conservative view that I don't want to be, I don't want to be assuming that Bitcoin is just going to flush down. I want to be assuming that it's going to bounce up, you know, relatively soon. Uh, just, a, you know, again, as a trader, that's what I have to be going off of. Uh, three day stokes over here, three day stokes still angled down, still gaining momentum to the downside as well. Again, the last rejection was a rejection of getting out of the neutral zone. So bears are in full control is what this tells me. And I, in each and every time that we actually have had a cross on this baby, it has lined up with some pretty nasty downs. I mean, this was your break of 6,000 right over here. This was this was a nice little down in October, but this was more consolidation between this guy and this guy, which were both signals on this. But the but the time it got signaled before that was the bull trap of 2018 right over here, 8,300 to 6,000 in the span of a week, two weeks, something like that. And then the time before that, you actually got a signal was right over here at 10,000 down to 6,000 as well. So historically speaking, this does have some pretty damn good uh, confluence with major moves. Now it, we have to decide, are we in the context of a consolidation or an actual pivot on the market? Well, again, because as you see, when it is during consolidation, you typically do get some down moves, but it's not like a full on, you know, breakdown of structure. Uh, and that's not what the Stokes going to tell us. Stokes just going to tell us about, you know, you know, oscillation behavior. It's, it's best for consolidation in general. Uh, obviously, it will cross down when, you know, when you have a true breakdown. But for now, I do. Again, I, I don't want to I don't want to say one thing or the other. But the more and more that I look at this, I, I think it's kind of starting to show through. I really do see the potential for this to actually have a, a, a real big move down. Uh, we do have our three days uh, RSI right over here, losing the exponential now using it as resistance. Not good either. Uh, remember that we had the hidden bearish divergence between this point and this point right over here, correlated with this point on price action, this point on price action in the overall context of a downtrend. And we are getting pretty damn close to the edge of the bearish control zone, which is where it typically does find um, find its home after uh, after initiating something like that. 
so again, this you know th this is a three day delay time frame, so we won't be getting another tick at least. In sorry, I guess actually tonight uh, at seven p.m. Eastern time, but it, it moves it moves at a snail's pace is what I'm trying to uh, is what I'm trying to insinuate. So again, you know that's a higher time frames, right? That's a higher time frames and uh, ADX DMI, you know. Technically, the ADX is strengthening. DMI minus is dominant. That's I wouldn't consider that a full-on signal, but uh, you know, let's just wrap it up with the monthly right over here. And the monthly is, you know, the more and more that I look at the monthly, uh, this should be very concerning. This should be extremely concerning. When Bitcoin has essentially struggled during this month to hold on to the green 55 exponential after last month, um, just barely, you know, keeping it up above. And and of course, everyone's looking at the Bitstamp chart right over here saying, oh my God, it's a hammer dildo. Hammer dildo, moon time, baby. V bottom out of this bitch. And we're going to 20,000 tomorrow. Well, very unlikely, extremely unlikely. And the reason why I say that is because when we do have an overall blow off top like this, you're probably gonna go through a long period of, of sideways like this in, that you had in 2014. Anyways, going back to the BLX index, because I don't wanna look at the volume anymore on that. Uh, if we do lose the green 55 exponential, I mean, where does that insinuate that we're likely to go down to? I mean, I mean, this would be the next target, 2400-ish uh, area. Um, so yeah, I, I don't really have any other way to say it other than that. It doesn't, I mean, I always want to say that it doesn't mean it's going to definitely happen, but that's what it looks like it's setting up for right here. Now, th these are monthly dildos, right? So this this could still take a while to play out. It doesn't, I mean, this could happen, you know, the first of February, the last of February, um, maybe even gets played out over a few months, you know, whatever it might be. Uh, I would be more inclined to say that as soon as, as soon as you give up the prior low at around 3,200, I mean, technically it's 3,150, but we could even make the decision at 3,250, I'd, I'd argue. Uh, it's likely to be a very, 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 very fast flush down. And the reason why I say that is going back on over here to our Bitstamp chart, put it on a weekly and uh, bringing up the good old volume profile, you can see, or perhaps we have to do this. Well, yeah, you can you can see it on the uh, you can see it on the volume profile that you know once this 3250ish area over here is given up, there ain't nothing doing all the way down to you know high 2000s and really the mid 2000s right over here is where it's where a lot of business is being done. But it was basically the same thing at 6000, right? When once 6000 was given up, there was no business being done right over here, and you saw exactly what happened. It ripped through on the way up, and then it ripped through right down on the way. Uh, sorry, on the way down as well. Um, this is perhaps even more pronounced on a daily, which we'll bring out right now. And let's just see what uh, what it shows. Yeah, again, very, 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 very little being done between basically uh, 3,250 and all the way down here to about 2,800. Um, so if Bitcoin does get one of those quick moves, uh, or sorry, if Bitcoin does get, uh, if Bitcoin does break current lows at around 3,250, uh, I think if Bitcoin closes a daily below there, um, this likely to happen faster sooner rather than later um again i'm making assumptions here but hopefully this is coming out properly again i still want to be uh majorly ma uh, majorly conservative with looking at this and going back to the weekly right over here and putting on the 200 simple i really i, I still will be going neutral or, or mostly neutral around the 200 simple moving average the red the red moving average right over here and then maybe play and move to the downside by buying some puts i typically don't like i don't really care for buying you know premium but uh uh, but if you know if this is going to happen, this would actually be one of the times to to do it, and that's probably how I'll end up playing that move if it does happen. And if not, you know, then then just have to risk whatever I paid for those pieces of shit. Fucking hate buying options. Options were created to be sold. This is coming from a fucking market maker, you know, or, or a former market maker. Um, and uh, and looking at this right over here, yeah, you know, 200 simple. Never want to be short coming down to that. I mean, in fact, you could even you could even argue that we already tested it and this was just a front run. I mean, it's te it's technically like two bucks below 3300, and we got all the way down to 3322 on Stamp. I didn't believe any other exchange got that low. Let's go check out uh, uh, GDAX over here. GDAX got as low as 33.37. Um, so actually, that one did get pretty pretty damn low. Uh, Bit Mexico only got to 33.43. Um, what about what about Finex? Yeah, Finex didn't get that low either. Finex, I mean, 30, Finex is, is operating on a different like scale essentially, but 34.22, whereas the 200 is all the way at 3,300. So, so quite literally about 120 bucks off the lows, um, which is significant to me. You know, you know, uh, unlike Stamp, which was about 20 bucks off the lows. Uh, but overall, you know, when you have a bearish engulfing dildo like this, and then consolidation, continuation, continuation, more likely to be followed up. We also have weekly Stokes uh, be held in in the more critical zone. Having a, I mean, hint, this is not confirmed just yet. Yet, I don't believe, but uh, they are hinting at a cross down. I mean, any you know, ending the week here or lower, anywhere here or lower is going to 
is is going to look like that. It, I mean, uh, barring any sort of, I mean, as far as, you know, going back to the monthly run over here, and this is just, this is so important, barring any sort of run back above the 55, which is literally all the way at 36.72 and a half, um, I, uh, doesn't look good, man. It, it does make me think that this happens sooner rather than later. Um, and keep in mind, now we're going to go into the lower time frames. Keep in mind, you know, that again, the green 55 on the uh, on the monthly, by the way, is also basically a slope to the downside now. Um, we'll be coming in a th again, 36.72. Now let's go down into lower time frames and discuss why this is interesting or, or kind of like what this really offers up. And if that is all the way at 36.72, well, remember, Bitcoin spent a long time at consolidating about a, about two months at this 3500 level right over here that we just broke through um, a couple days ago or three days ago something like that so that's likely to be extremely strong resistance coming back on the way up now i would actually even argue that if bitcoin did get back above here on the way up it it would probably <laughs> it, it, it would actually probably be you know just by the nature of getting back here retesting this breakdown so soon uh i would probably think that we're probably going to have a, a run relatively fast to the to, to the low four thousands most likely um but uh, but hey, if Bitcoin does break does break above that, well then yes, it can actually make a run towards that thirty six uh, seventy two ish area that we were just looking at. That's actually right around where the four hour two hundred simple moon average is right over here. Uh, but as you can see, that's you know Bitcoin has a lot of work to do if it wants to get up there. And this this right over here theoretically should be should be strong resistance as it was strong support on the way down. Um, so just put that, just to put that in perspective, again, I don't want to be calling things one way or the other just yet. Uh, I just want to present the case in the most in the most non biased way possible. But things are really starting to add up with literally, you know, two days. I mean, we have today and then tomorrow and then new monthly. So basically, two days to get back above that thirty six uh, seventy two ish area. Otherwise, well, I, I, just, I mean. <laughs> That's yeah. I mean, you can't argue with price action, right? You can't argue with price action, unfortunately. Uh, price action. I mean, you can argue with price action, but the liquidation engine will. <laughs> as a judge, they don't really give a fuck. <laughs> so again, uh, four hour twenty one exponential providing some resistance on this last run up. Uh, as long as we are essentially living below the high of this guy at thirty four thirty three on GDAX, uh, this is just another lower high. Is what it looks like to me compared to this guy right over here. We are printing. Uh, what will look like hidden bearish divergence uh, as long as this guy is, you know, as long as that wick maintains the, or sorry, maintains to be the, the, the swing high right over there. So maybe, maybe best seen on like a two hour, yeah, two hour right over here, you know, between this point and this point right over here, we do have some hidden bearish divergence, assuming that this area does not get taken out. So again, Again, speaking in contingencies, but that's what trading is. It's a lot of a lot of non-black and white thinking. It's a lot of gray area type thinking. But uh, I actually did take a trade over here on my main account. That's why I'm not showing my streamer account right now because I do want to be uh, easy on the trigger finger. If we do get if we do take anywhere back above this area right over here, I take the loss immediately, um, as that's essentially what I'm going for. Is that this is just another lower high in the overall context of more lower highs um, as we trend onwards and downwards, getting some of that what I call I, I like to call this continuation divergence. Uh, basically, when you have you know higher highs in your oscillator, but lower highs in price action in the overall context of a downtrend. I mean, look at the volume characteristics on this as well. It is not too healthy. I know that people are also looking at this as some maybe going to like an hourly or something like this. Maybe they're looking at it, uh, you know, you can, you, can, you can chart this a couple different ways, but I think the right way, if you are going to be charting it like this, is something like this, actually, where this is a rising channel. Now, I know people are also doing it like this, where it's some sort of a panic coming off the low. I'd uh, I'm less inclined to think that that's the right way to be doing it, but we do have a nice bear flag right over here. Volume catchers do work out. The, sh the shape works out and it is on an hourly, which, you know, good enough is good enough. doesn't mean that we can't have another run up at the top side of this resistance right over here, but essentially as long as we are respecting that guy as resistance to me, you know, it's, you know, the, 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 the trade that I'll take is to the downside. If we do break above this area, if we, if we essentially just break above and close like an hourly dildo above this guy right over here at around 34, uh, 33 on GDAX, then yeah, you know, uh, don't really see too much stopping from about 3472 at that time. Uh, 3472 should be, sh uh, should, should offer some fight. But uh, if, if, like I said, if Bitcoin gets back, if Bitcoin is able to get above this area and get back to the breakdown area of 35, uh, 20 ish area, then I, you know, I would, I would consider like, yes, technically it is resistance, but my opinion is that that's probably just going to blow right through there. It's, it's probably just going to blow right through there. Um, and this is going to end up being a bear trap. If, if that, if that actually does happen, I'd be extremely cautious, extremely fucking cautious. Uh, again, keeping in mind that, you know, the, the 55 on the monthly is not that far away after that. Uh, 
it's kind of like the next one on the block if this area is taken out. So so this would really start to look a lot more like a, uh, a bear trap to me if that were to happen. But for now, obviously, with everything going on, I mean, I'm going to take the other side of that. But that's how I'll be, you know, switching around my opinion if price action tells me that it's the time to do it. Um, for, for, for what it's worth right over here, this is, you know, again, very corrective structure in the way that I look at it. Volume already falling off as you try to put in some, uh, as you try to put in a little bit of a rally right over here to me, that's just a small relief rally. Um, as the lower time frames start to, uh, start to switch around, you know, lower time frame oscillators were getting pretty exhausted yesterday. Uh, hourly starting to get back up there again, you know, losing a little bit of momentum, but still crossed up. So, you know, you don't, uh, you know, you don't fucking trade against it until it tells you to trade against it. Uh, two hour right over here, two hour, you know, same sort of a thing, still headed up, gave you a little bit of a fake out this, uh, the early morning. I wasn't up during that time, but you know, it, it, <laughs> hopefully that, hopefully that one didn't catch you four hour right over here, four hour right over here is a little bit more difficult. To, I mean, it's, it's, I, I read this as a rejection of this area right over here, but then what's, what's going on right over here. I mean, it's, you got to still respect, as long as you're respecting this area, I, I run with the assumption that this is just a rejection and we're, and we're getting ready for, for another run, probably back down to the lower end of this support around 33 ish area. Uh, and then if this breaks, well, then what do we have? I mean, we basically have another, we basically have a bear flag being resolved to the downside, which would have a measurement move probably somewhere down around that 3250 ish area, which we'll do soon. Uh, eight hour, which just ended as well, the highest time from any of the soonest. We actually did print a bear, uh, sorry, a bullish engulfing dildo right over here. So that's a great counterpoint to what I'm saying. This would, you know, bullish engulfing dildos typically followed up. I mean, statistically, extremely likely to be followed up. Um, yes, I don't like trading counter overall trend, but that's, you know, that's, you know, th this is the biggest counterpoint in the lower time frames. Uh, uh, yes, you still, I mean, look at where the 10 simple is. It's right around this resistance. Look where the 21 exponential is right around this resistance. So, you know, even if Bitcoin does break out, those areas are going to come into play, uh, especially the 3470 ish area, which I'd be like, which I'd be interested to take a trade around. If Bitcoin gets back above that area, though, I, you know, yeah, people are going to be talking that 3500 is resistance, but I don't, I, I would not be taking trades there, uh, to the short side. I'd actually, I'd wait. And if it breaks above, I'd take a long because this, that would really be indicative that, you know, the bulls want to defend the monthly 55 and we're probably actually going to give it, give another run into like the low 4000s, maybe even, maybe even mid 4000s to that point. Um, so yeah, it is kind of like it, we, we are starting to get like a little bit on a timetable right now. Uh, what about 10 hour right over here? Uh, 10 hour, same sort of thing. We'll print a, uh, we, uh, we'll print a, uh, what's it called? A bullish engulfing dildo in the next uh, 34 minutes. I mean, assuming that, you know, assuming that it ends here high, but it, it looks like it wants to. Uh, 10 hour stokes will be likely crossing the upside as well as they are hinting right now. Again, barring any sort of a nice, uh, any uh, any sort of a sell down in the next 33 minutes. Um, but for now, yeah, looking, looking like it doesn't want to. Jewel over here too i mean it's it's in the it's in the very deep red zone over here typically it doesn't stay down there for long but i mean it could stay down there for longer than, than this right over here uh so again trying to trying to provide some own counterpoints to what i'm saying but uh this is you know this is why i'm thinking the way that i'm thinking and how i'll adjust if price action you know tells me that it's the right time to adjust so i, I hope that that is clear I, I i understand that trading and and, and technical analysis can be kind of annoying for the average person because it's not you know it's not like cut and dry it's not like it's not like a superman video that says is bitcoin going to 20,000 by the end of the day? Find out in this video. <laughs> it's like, all right, tell me more about your fucking symmetrical triangles, you asshole. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Anyways, um, yeah, I don't really have anything else. I, I, I don't think I have too much else to say on Mr. Bitcoin other than that. Let's go check out the longs and shorts. Uh, longs and shorts, we do still have, we actually gained a, a bunch of longs in the last day and uh, and some shorts as well. Let's actually go and look at them visually represented. Uh, we just saw the rates that they're paying. Uh, longs still paying a uh, significant rate in comparison to the shorts, but not that crazy. We have longs uh, over 30,000 when Bitcoin is still below, you know, all critical major resistances. So to me, that is a huge warning sign. We have people to be trapped with a lot of these people putting on longs uh, starting over here on the 20th of January. Where was price action on the 20th of January? It probably was actually wasn't too far away, but let's go check out. Let's go check it out. Uh, 20th of January was right over here. So yeah, most of these longs are, you know, a significant amount of these longs are probably underwater, um, having an average price at least around 3,500, I'd imagine. And then the more recent ones, a little bit below over here, uh, are a little bit in profit, I suppose. But you know, put that into context, you know, you really don't want above 30,000 longs when you're, I mean, really, really, especially below, you know, the 3,500 level, you're really even more critically uh, spoken around 4,000. Uh, 
So overall, you know, even if Bitcoin were to work its way up uh, uh, again from here, yes, I do think it would just be another, you know, just another kind of uh, rally in an overall bear market. But, um, you know, how high does that get? I mean, you're going to have shorts covering at that point in time because we do have we do have a significant amount of shorts going down in the last few days. So they're going to come under pressure and, you know, could probably could probably get into the into like the mid 4000s, I'd imagine. But for right over here on shorts, remember the shorts uh, getting down to this low 20,000 region right over here, right over here, right over here. And of course, you know, when Bitcoin was well over 15. 15,000 over here and over here, uh, these critical these critical spikes down, um, those line up with major dumps, major fucking dumps. This was your January dump, February dump, uh, dump of, of early August, break of 6,000 right over here, and we're once again in this level right over here. So, and they are marching their way up. So again, uh, this is one of the big things that should let you know that the bear market is not over. Uh, the fact that, you know, the, the, the bears are doing such a good job of running price, then taking profits, running price, taking profits, running price, taking profits once again. And now they're, you know, perhaps running it up once again. Now the critical level, um, as far as I'm concerned on, on the shorts is, is this critical level right over here at around 30, 30,000, a share to 31,000. Um, once, once shorts get above that area, it does, it's, it's like longs above 33,000. It's, it's too many people on the bus syndrome. Doesn't mean that it immediately, you know, shakes them all out and goes the other way no not at all but what it does imply is that it is now on the table of possibilities and something to watch out for as you can see we're well below that area right now and you know ob obviously with longs uh you know, significantly more than uh, six, uh, showing their position significantly more than shorts, which remember shorts over here are 20, uh, almost uh, 26 and a half thousand. But if we go over and check out how many hedged, how many are hedged, it's really three and a half thousand. So there's really about 23 and a quarter uh, thousand shorts um, uh, naked open versus over 30,000 open longs, which again, what does that imply? I mean, implies we have an we have an imbalance and when people talk about everyone being bearish uh the positions data would not show that uh when everyone's talking about people being bearish i mean like over here in april when when shorts are at like forty thousand, or over here when you know what when, when bitcoin first had its like major down um in in early mid-december yeah that's a time to be on the other side of it right that's a time to be on the other side of it but as far as that goes you know what does the data actually say i mean the data shows that more people i mean people are, are, more, are more bullish they think that this is either you know a rally or or or, or the actual low which i would again uh, check out the video the the long the last long-term analysis video in the long-term analysis playlist uh, as you can find it right over there but let's see we're actually coming down a little bit right over here sorry let's go back to my fresh uh, gdex chart yeah still operating within the confines of this uh, bear flag and you know what? i did just close some of my um some of my main account positions so i'll show my streamer account right now i actually have a decent position on my streamer account about uh 62 bitcoin short um and I'll just be uh, governing that again, using this guy as a risk management tool at around 3420 ish area uh, is where, you know, is, is where I'll know that I don't want to be in this position anymore. But for now, a little bit in the green and uh, just wa watching, wishing, waiting, whatever the fuck that's like. No one knows what that song is anyways. Uh, but yeah. Let's go check out futures right over here. Uh, CME futures, uh, basically doing the same thing. Actually, did make a little bit of a slight uh, of a of a higher high right over here. Funnily enough, we, man, I really don't like this when we get divergence between these two prices. But I do put more weight on the CMEs and the fact that they made a higher high over here, albeit on very low volume. Let's see if we have any sort of divergence. We do not, um, at least on an hourly, maybe on like a thirty minute. Uh, nope, still still not on here either. Uh, is concerning. Um, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be in and out of this position fast. I do not want to be holding this for too long. I'll be closing it any you know if if uh if it's if it takes a stab back down to this area right over here at 3360-ish area on cmes and on spot that's probably going to equate to like 3380-ish area yeah 3390 actually well let's actually adjust this yeah so somewhere down around here yeah around 3380 3390-ish area somewhere down around there i'd be happy to call uh, call in a lot of that position um yeah it's going to look like about 3390 um but yeah bearish formation in the bearish market uh i mean i'll play it until it tells me not to uh, let's go check out gbtc gbtc the leading indicator or, or at least uh, has been a great leading indicator for Bitcoin over the past year. Um, sorry, over a year, I should say. And the way that I look at this, the way that we've been plotting this for the last, um, well, how, how long has this been going on? Yeah, since middle of December. So month and a half, um, you know, was a bear flag. And I actually do have that formally breaking. I believe this was on Monday. Yeah, was this Monday the 28th? Yeah, Monday the 28th right over here. Uh, you know, nice spike on volume on the hourly. Not really shown on a daily, which is concerning. Um 
And then so far, rejection of the 21 exponential moving average right over here. So as long as we're respecting this area as resistance, you know, I'm actually going to put in an alert right now. Uh, I do res I do look at this as as a legitimate breakdown. I mean, this is a nice rising channel bear flag, which does have a measure move all the way down here to that, you know, to, uh, to that 25 uh, fit, or sorry, two dollars and 55 cent region, which, by the way, would match up with the monthly, you know, 89 exponential right around uh, 2600 ish area. So or sorry, 2400 um, is uh, more appropriately speaking. So putting 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 the case together for that remember um you know and in this the, the, this next discussion is devoid of timing of this i want to leave time leave the timing out of this but we're going to talk about we're, uh, we're basically going to talk about where things likely go if that 200 simple moving average breaks which again is around 3300 or i'm, I'm using 3250 on a daily uh, to really manage that but if 3250 breaks on a daily, I do start looking down towards this next blue box territory right around 2300 to 2600. That's also the 886 Fibonacci retracement, which which is where Bitcoin did bottom out in 2014. Um, just saying, it does seem like we do have a lot of Boston algos kind of uh, respecting that guy. It does you do you do see the 886 show up quite a bit? So definitely do uh, add that to your default tools. It does not come default. Uh, we also have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area, better seen on a daily. Uh, some actually very important ones, and the volume profile has a massive node being done right in the thick of this, right around 2600 ish area. And if we do go back to the BLX index, we have just enough data to populate a 377 exponential over here on a weekly, which is incredibly powerful. That's what I look for on made on, on traditional markets to actually like bottom this bitch out or bottom that bitch out, which, uh, you know, still we'll get to that. We'll get to that in a bit, uh, but that's coming in right around 2600. So a lot of things pointing down that uh, down around that uh, that range. And uh, going back on over here to our GDAX chart, we actually do have something else uh, pointing in that range as well. Remember this guy right over here. Uh, we, we have a few things to be aware of, right? Uh, this symmetrical triangle that Bitcoin put in over the course of about two and a half weeks in late December, that is still very much active. And that has a measure move, uh, a suggested move all the way down here to essentially the prior lows, which, you know, 3250, beautiful. And that is also where this nice horizontal is right over here. One, two, three, three, ten, three, three touches makes a trend. And we have this kind of lining up with that as well. And we just have the lower highs, you know, ever since the breakdown of this area over here. So as long as we're living below the breakdown point, which which is, you know, 36 or sorry, 38, 40-ish area, uh, 38, 50, so, somewhere right over here. I am looking for this to be hit. I mean, you do see things just like slowly but surely slink on downwards. Um, in, in this overall corrective pattern. Now, what is this essentially forming? Well, <laughs> I mean, it's going to form one of two things. It's either going to form likely a descending triangle if you just extend this going all the way through here. I mean, just covering our lower highs and filling out this area, which is going to have a measure, which is going to have a measure move pretty much down to that 2400 level, which we can do right now. Um, or what it's going to form is just a really fucking ugly inverted cup and handle, which I mean, it's not even technically that it's just a pattern of distribution. That's all we're really going off of. And yeah, this this measure moves all the way down here at around 2300 ish area um, if it does break that. So you know, there's the implications of breaking this prior low is, is the big news. I don't want to really, I don't want to force my opinion on timing. I can just present both cases, but the more and more that I do look at it, the more and more it, it actually does. It, I mean, it actually does feel like that's, you know, quite possible, which I, I was really not considering too much to begin with. Um, so I, I think, I think I'm probably going to be, I think I can very easily be wrong on that. And, uh, and I'd be happy to be wrong on that. I mean, as you see, I'm, I mean, I'm short, even on my, uh, even on my streamer account, I'm like, uh, abnormally short on this guy I usually don't put on position this big but again just basically just playing off the 21 expansion moving average right over there um happy to do so 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 yeah you know and, and if it does not fill out this ascending triangle which if, if it were to break you know at this point right here this would not be considered a descending triangle i mean technically speaking it's it's it, it wouldn't be but what is it i mean at that point in time what do you what do you call this it's just it's it's fucking it's a dog shit chart is what it is it's ugly is what it is um but uh, is there like a technical name for it? I don't. I don't even think you need to have a technical name for it. I would just. I would just call this a corrective move, corrective consolidation, likely to be resolved to the downside. Um, you know, I'm sure someone's going to call this an inverted cup and handle. Maybe it is. It'd be like the same measured move. So it's. It's like who gives a fuck? You know, just be somewhere down around there. Uh, okay. Cool. So, um, what else do we want to talk about? We talked about GBC, we talked about CMEs, we talked about Bitcoin, and we talked about longs and shorts. Okay, I think that covers it up for that one. Let's go over to, to Mr. Buterall. I do want to check out, or sorry, let's first let's go to traditional marks. I do want to check them out. Yeah, closing unched on the day, or unchanged, I should say. Uh, but again, you know, to me, th this is an island top right over here, most likely. As long as we're respecting the 200 exponential moving average, I think that I, my, my opinion is that this is actually the top of this rally. Um, a nice rising wedge broken down 
retested and uh, further down. Um, but uh, again, as long as you're below the 200 on this guy, I, I do think that this one is likely to have some more down. In fact, same thing as Bitcoin, right? The monthly is what is what I have my eyes on with two days to go. Do we end above or below this 21 expansion movement average right over here? If we, if we end above, then I, I won't be bearish on this anymore. Or I, I don't think it's appropriate to be bearish on this anymore. Sorry, Mr. Spence Mitz, but you know, if if it ends below, then yeah, I can still retain my bearishness. But for now, um, you know, looking at the weekly, weekly does look like a rejection of the 21. These are gaining divergence away from each other. So, you know, it's it's telling you that the trend the trend is kind of strengthening each other downside, but needs to have follow through like like now or tomorrow, now or tomorrow below 261 and a half, essentially. Otherwise, uh, that that's not going to be the play, or at least that's not the right way to be doing it. Um, in my experience, again, you can you can look at this all you want, but it's the same thing as Bitcoin. You know, I don't really, you know, this one had a much more powerful relief rally, whereas Bitcoin did not. Bitcoin had a pretty, uh, pretty weak, uh, did, I mean, <laughs> I mean, it, it was, it was a good move. I mean, you can't tell me that like a thousand dollar rally on a $3,000 number is not good. Um, but in comparison to this, it's, you know, it's nothing. Although percentage wise, this is much less, right? This is much, much less. Um, but to put that in perspective, you know, this <laughs> just put that in perspective, I, I suppose, is the right way to do it. Um, OK, so, yeah, you know, if 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 the, if the monthly does end below there, then, yeah, I'm still pretty damn bearish. And uh, again, it's going to take some time, though. So just like Bitcoin, I won't I, I, I assume that traditional market is going to be taking a significantly much more long time than Bitcoin, which is just a terrible way of saying I think it's going to take more time. We need more time. We need more time. We need more money to get rid of AIDS uh, <laughs> over here on uh, Mr. Buterall. Now, let's go check out him. How does Mr. Buterall look again? Another another chart that just is easier to read. You know, weekly is the same thing over here as on Bitcoin, basically a nice selling Dildo right over here, consolidation, consolidation, continuation, um, being being held by all major movement averages, just getting the kiss of death by the uh, by the ten simple. It's just it's so weak, it can't even hold on to that. Now we got to go to lower time frames to actually really get a good read on this guy. And uh, Mr. Buterall actually not having this, uh, not having as good of a reaction as Bitcoin off of these lows over here. As long as it's respecting 107 and 75 cents as resistance, I mean that's. This just looks like another consolidation after a breakdown off of this descending triangle. Remember, this is sending triangle that, that we put in for about a month or so, a month or so right at the six, uh, seven, or sorry, what was it? 618 Fibonacci retracement, the golden pocket right over here, breaking down, hitting the full, I mean, basically the measure move all the way down to the 786, which is basically what Bitcoin's doing as well. By the way, I forgot to actually put this one on, uh, but let, let's let's put on the FIB as well. Because the FIB, you know, the, 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 the FIB retracement also makes me think that we're probably going to spend some time bouncing or at least, or doing some more bounce activity. But basically right over here, you can see that we are down around the 786 you know right around here it's going to be picked up on the first pass does it you know does it have actual carry through or not is a real question uh but if bitcoin were to get back to the 618 i i don't think it's a sell actually i really don't think it's a sell i think that we probably make a run at least to this area right over here and probably into the low four thousand. just that's just my opinion man that's just my opinion but I, I you know i feel like i've seen this before not that you know you can go off that that closely off uh, off, off pass but it would be indicative of a lot of things going on in the market with the overall you know with, with the way that the overall bots and algos are handling this price action it's especially a run like that to avert a major crisis at the end of the month would be so fucking, you know, revealing. Um, but that is well and far away from happening to be very, very clear. I'm postulating an idea that is that is a less likely one to happen, to be very, very clear. I don't think that that happens. But if it were, that's what it's saying, essentially. Um, but as you can see right over here, you know, if, if Bitcoin popped over and uh, in tagged 3470 a share, that would be a sell. Um, but if it gets above there, I, I would be very cautious. I'd be very cautious. You'll also notice that the 886 Fibonacci retracement is coming down around here, around this lower support as well. So a lot of things down around that region. Um, I forgot to check out the lower time frame also. We got the four hour Stokes actually uh, headed up and gaining momentum to the upside. So fair enough. That would be a more bullish thing. Uh, we got four hour. Do we have anything else to say? I mean, four hour ADX DMI is telling you that this is nothing right over here. This is just consolidation, which I agree. It is it's just consolidation, um, a bearish consolidation, most likely. Uh, six hour right over here. Six hour Stokes are headed up, fresh cross up what about our 10 hour did, did we get a did we get a cross up oh yeah we haven't we haven't ticked that one yet 12 hours still headed down um, daily as we started this stream with is still headed down as well as two day three day and weekly um so yeah uh what else do we want to look at okay we looked at mr buterall well let's go back and do a little bit more of it a section on mr buterall um because he has been the easier he, again he is just the easier tre uh uh, chart to read. Uh, Mr. Buterall, you know, I'm still getting the volume signature of something that is consolidating actually, which is quite interesting because we do have a breakdown off of this structure right over here, which tells me that this is unlikely to be a head and shoulders. So for all the people saying that this thing's just going to flush down to 66 or 69 or whatever the fuck it is, I, I, I don't think that's the right read on this. I want to see like major volume when you actually
actually break the neckline, which I don't believe it, it was. I think that you have a you have a descending triangle right over here. You have a white cough distribution top right over here, and then basically just mark down redistribution right over here. And we just got marked down once again. And this is probably you know as long as we're not making higher highs off this price section, probably just going to get marked down once again. Um, but what can I say about that? Well, same thing as Bitcoin, right? If it gets back above this 116 area, the 117 area that it broke down from, uh, I I. I think that we're probably going back to like 144 and a half somewhere right around here actually uh so again we're kind of at a big decision point um as i'm not really seeing like the sort of behavior that i want to see on a legitimate breakdown or breakout uh on both of them let's go check out mr ripples mr ripples nipples and then also stellar because they they are they are like you know they they are also like top market cap coins and we do see a lot of uh, a lot of very interesting behavior from them but basically mr ripples nipples finally finally touching down on the on a low 28 cent um support i mean remember we had been calling we had been calling for that for literally you know all the way over here at the beginning of the month um and just slowly but surely just slides its way down just this rolling over behavior very ugly price action um three day right over here very nasty three day little death cross below all major moving averages as i mean as long as you're below that 34 and a half cent region right over here very bad very very bad and as long as you're below 32 cent area right over here extremely bad um but probably does i would imagine that it probably tries to bounce this area a little bit more it's tested at one two three and this is the fourth time i mean it does get weaker and weaker with each and every test as you can see on the volume uh profile right over here sorry volume signature over here uh but until we actually formally break that 28 cent level i don't want to get too damn bearish on this guy so it, it you know I, I basically look at this as like testing that last lower support that i'm looking for on bitcoin and mr buterol as well mr buterol being around 94 dollars i believe it was or 93 dollars something like that um but but mr ripple and i believe mr stellar are already there mr ripple's hanging on to it right over here and mr stellar right over here is i believe already broken through it yes it already has broken through it so again a counterpoint to what i'm saying about you know uh, 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 the the counterpoint to what i'm saying about this taking its time to really resolve itself is staring you right in front of the face right uh, right in your face i mean this is this the destiny you know uh very very similar chart actually to especially bitcoin uh, but basically, you know, overall doesn't, you know, hasn't given up its whole gains like like most other coins. So that's, you know, that's a, that's a more positive sign. I want to have a positive message, but uh, give things credit where it's due. But over here, I mean, bull trap, break of structure, retest of structure, resistance, three day to death cross, below all major moving averages. I mean, that looks eerily similar to a lot of the things that we're looking at right now. Uh, and this guy coming all the way down to uh, this eight, eight and a quarter cent support right over here. I mean, yeah, you do have support right over there and you probably do try to bounce a little bit, but I'd imagine, uh, you know, at some point this thing comes down to at least six and a half and maybe even, you know, four and a half right over here. I, I, if things get really bad, two and a half. Uh, this one's pretty advanced in its overall structure. Uh, you know, three day, three day Stokes right over here, giving you the same read as well. Uh, there's a lot of similar, there's a lot more similarities between these than there is not. Uh, do we even have a chance for, for, for a bullish divergence off these lows? I mean, we need to put in a reversal dildo first, which we just don't have. Uh, doesn't mean that it can't happen, but we need to see it first before, before getting too excited. So yeah, let's go back on over to Mr. Bitcoin. And I forgot to pound out one last thing before I do leave you off. Uh, but basically we got, um, yeah, four day right over here and let's go over to, oh, I guess we can do it on GDAX or maybe let's go to Bitstamp. Yeah, Bitstamp is going to confirm a four-day deal to death cross, uh, barring any sort of major run back above like you know five thousand in the next uh, two days on the second of uh, February when it gets its next tick. But uh, this will be confirmed, um, and again below all major moving averages. It's, it's not good uh four hours four sorry four day stokes are are hinting out of at a fresh cross down again in the bearish control zone look and look at where this was held all throughout the actual bear you know the more the more intense bear market this was th this was going back all the way over here just ground down 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 and it just does not let the stoke get above that area so this is the area of attack is, is what i'm trying to say uh, for bears right now, um, going off of this, uh, go, uh, going off this time frame. So, you know, looking at these sorts of things, it's, <sighs> I mean, like I said, I, I will still be a conservative trader and, uh, and be calling in positions uh, around the prior lows, but I would not be surprised if this thing, I, I, I will no longer be surprised if this thing actually flushes straight on down. Um, there are plenty of things staring me in the face that say so. And, uh, yeah. 
I mean, that's that's really hard to say about it. Uh, but I'd rather be cautious, rather be safe than sorry. I can always you can always open up a uh, not you, but if this is not financial advice, I'm not a financial advisor. All this is is just me sharing my opinion in these exact sort of same situations that you might even find yourself in. But uh, this area right over here, if this area right over here breaks thirty two fifty, then yeah, I guess I'll just jump back into a position and just keep an open mind that uh, this could very easily happen sooner rather than later. Um, but again, you know, to just wrap up this video, because it's probably already gone on for too long, I do apologize about that. Do you want, do you want to be respectful of your time? Um, but overall, you know, as long as Bitcoin is really below 3470-ish area right over here, I am more immediately bearish. Uh, major support down around here, which also does match up with the measure move off this symmetrical triangle down around 3250. That is my big area that as long as we're, as long as Bitcoin's above that area, you know, don't, you know, want to be more conservative than not conservative. By the same token, if Bitcoin does get above this 3470-ish area right over here and take a stab back to this 3520, uh, 20 ish area right over here the area of breakdown yeah people are going to tell you to sell that but i i would start to look at this as more as something more like a bear trap and we're probably headed back up to at least you know 3750 and probably probably even like low 4000s after that uh but overall you know this is uh is kind of what i'm seeing right now this is how i'll be trading it. i'll be back on with the live stream a little bit later um so look forward to seeing you there if not well i wish you a happy uh, wednesday wednesday morning hope that you're staying warm hope stay, hope you're staying uh safe and safu as well and uh look forward to seeing you soon take care and goodbye